Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Leo Solar Festival of the 2025 Initiative. My name is Alexandra, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. I invite Dot Maver to lead us in the alignment. Thank you, Alexander. <clears throat> we sound a united ohm, uniting our hearts across distance as we align our group centers and identify in the one life as we stand together in the fire of love in the group heart center. As we begin our meditative time together today within the Leo full moon energies, let us be cognizant also of the Venus Sun superior conjunction at 2.07 a.m. Wednesday, New York time, followed by the Thursday, 8.29 a.m. New York time, Leo full moon. Venus stands as the soul to the personality of the earth. <clears throat> it is important, therefore, for us to pay attention to her movements. During this superior conjunction, she turns to a period of contemplation when she becomes impressed by extra systemic inspiration. Right now, the solar, planetary, and earth logoi are going into meditation deep as this Venus Sun conjunction aligns with the Leo full moon when there is a powerful extra systemic alignment with Sirius, putting us in touch with a powerful monastic vibration, a love frequency that, given the role of Venus with this full moon, unites heart and mind as the full moon is supercharged. We sound a united ohm, raising our consciousness into the group head center and upward to our group soul. We take our place in the vast meditative field surrounding the planet as so many groups hold a united soul focus. We lift our group consciousness still further as we prepare to touch and receive the available extraplanetary energies via Sirius, standing steady in the light as the group observer. And together, and as a group, we sound the mantra. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love that is in my soul pour forth to them. 
May the strength that is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts that my soul creates reach and encourage them. From this point of united group consciousness, we work. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Dot. And thank everyone for joining us today for this Leo Festival celebration in our virtual circle. And our guest today is a very dear and special soul, Gloria Krupp. Gloria is a founder and director of the School of Ageless Wisdom, which been established in 1977. Yeah. And since then, this school been working, offering programs for many individuals on the teachings of Ageless Wisdom. And today, Gloria will share with us on her work, many years research work on the fires of the group work. And many of us have been inspired by this work for all these decades. And today we have a unique opportunity to hear it from directly from Gloria and to ask our questions and share our thoughts. Mm. It was 1981 when I first met you, Gloria at the Arcane School Conference in New York City, and you were on fire with the School of Ageless Wisdom and putting Robert Muller's World Core Curriculum into practice through the Robert Muller School, which you have done over the years. A beautiful demonstration of both the possibility of education and the fires of group work. We look forward to your sharing today and are grateful that you're here. Over to you, Gloria. Thank, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's a great privilege to be working with you. I appreciate you so much. I, um, if we could just think of the Leo keynote for a second. I am that, and that am I. And then, um, it's going to take a while for me to explain these fires and um, so I'll get started as soon as it's correct to do so. If you're ready for me to start, Dot. Yes, about yes please, Gloria. We would like to hear about your experience throughout the years and the depth of your understanding of the successful passage through the fires of group work. Please, thank you. Well, the, the, the main thing that I need to make clear is that um, I observed during the 16 years that we were implementing the World Core Curriculum, I observed that, the, that there were these specific incidents and times that the fire showed up and um, and that's how I made the um, 
little booklet on the flowers of group work it was because I saw that there were four specific fires and um, that everyone is dealing with them who whenever you're working with any kind of a of a project these four fires are very important for each person to go through and actually the names of the fires are names that I gave them but they have to do with energies the first fire is inspiration the second fire is dedication the third fire is integration and the fourth fire is unity now if you're going to start a project there's usually someone that is that is first inspired and then you recruit a few people to work with you they must be inspired also that's the first fire if they're not inspired then they may have some doubts about whether the project is going to work well and that will cause problems if that person remains involved so it's better to have every person inspired they will be working in true dedication which is the second fire just remember if you've been part of a group you were inspired to work with it to start with then dedication comes and the dedication is that whatever is going to go on after you have decided what is required to go through the process there could be many things we happen to have a bunch of children and a bunch of certified teachers and we ended up with a with a private school that was fully accredited from birth through high school and during that 16 years i saw this dedication the inspired people working with dedication to achieve the completion of having graduates at the end of the 16 years the third when when you when you're dedicated then if there are meetings and so forth you attend those meetings and if you're not dedicated and you miss some of them everybody knows that everybody knows you're not there and so usually the group knows who isn't dedicated and those people may be inspired to help but you can't trust them to be there all the time so you can let them help with specific things but you wouldn't want them to be into in a position where they had to be trusted all the time because they are not truly dedicated so you want people inspired and dedicated then the third fire is the most difficult one of all it's because the group after it has become inspired and dedicated has to start working together on a daily basis and then they get acquainted with one another and getting acquainted is what is a difficult situation for people because nobody's perfect so everybody has some kind of imperfection that shows up and everybody knows it sometimes people see flaws that aren't actually flaws but they still that still keeps them from wanting to integrate with that person so I found that the solution to the whole thing about the integration is that I'll accept your apparent imperfections if you will accept mine and we'll go on with our inspired 
and dedicated work. And we will be integrated as we do it. The other thing that we have to remember is that each person is bringing some assets to this situation. And they're also bringing some liabilities. And what we want to do is appreciate the assets and overlook the liabilities. And a major thing to remember about the third fire of integration is do not discuss any kind of flaw with anyone at all. Whatever you see may or may not be real. It may or may not be actually a problem. It may just be in your mind. So what you want to do is overlook it. Let it just go on and love the people that you're working with. The other thing that's very important is that there are three kinds of people. There are the head people who mostly are using will in their activities and intelligence. And there are the heart people who use love in their working. And they don't understand each other. The heart people and the head people do not understand one another because the head people are likely to think that the heart people are emotional and are not as intelligent. And the heart people are likely to think that the head people are unloving and stuck in their heads instead of using love. But it's not true. Neither one of those things is true. And then some people are head and heart balanced and they work very well together. But what you have to understand is the head people are loving and the heart people are intelligent. And you have to know that and allow it to work out as the people work together. You have to have both kinds of people for the project to work out correctly. You need will and love, not just one or the other. And if you don't put them together and keep them together, then the third fire, you'll never get through it because your group will not integrate. And eventually, it will spoil the whole thing. If you do overlook all the problems and never discuss them with anyone at all, ever, then you'll see that the group will become integrated and will work perfectly together. And you will have passed through that third fire, which is so dangerous to a project. Each person sees everyone else as having assets and being willing to work together in complete integration. Then the fourth fire is the fire of unity. When these people are getting together, they're already inspired and dedicated, and now they are integrated. To be in unity, you find that sometimes everyone wants to do the right thing, but whose idea of the right thing? This is where motives come into question. And what I realized in observing, the only thing that would bring about unity was when the group and each individual in it realized that whatever their decision was had to fit with the whole, it had to fit into the entire universe as something that was putting them all together. 
so that if they have a an idea that they want to put into operation and the uh, the group sees that that doesn't really work for the whole then they will not be unified so when they realize that it has to be unity for the whole then the fire of unity has been passed through and all four fires are good uh, sometimes a person will be really good at all four and have no problem at all and work perfectly get along with everyone and, and have great ideas and so forth but in almost every single situation, there'll be one of the fires that's more difficult to get through. And whatever that fire is, until that person gets through it, the whole plan is going to have some problems and going to be difficult to finish. And maybe that person will have to leave. And most groups find in a situation like that, that person after person is replaced because they couldn't make it through that third fire of integration. They couldn't bear the problems of some one person that they imagined had a problem. And it's really just imagination because everyone has assets. And so this, this is a situation for all four fires. And when a group can get through all of them at once, or when every person involved is working in relation to the whole, then you have a completed situation getting through the fires. I did find that when you put this situation in relation to something like a business. The business is owned by someone who has decided to start it. And it has some kind of service going on that the public wants. And so the persons who are hired are people who want to do that. Even though it may not be an inspiring job, it's something that is giving them a, an income and so they have started and then the person who owns the business will find that there is a horrendous amount of gossip going on among the people because they have no idea what the fires are and they have no idea how to integrate so the one who owns the business has the option to fire individuals <laughs> who cannot integrate. So even in a situation where there is a business, the fires exist and they can put everybody, the person who owns the business can put everybody into a relationship that works if they will just discuss it together and understand how the fires work. So at that point, I would like to see if there is anyone has questions about these fires now. So we invite now our audience to join the conversation and um, in order for you to talk, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. Or you could write your comments or questions in the uh, question section of the control panel. But it's always good to hear your voice. Yeah, thank you, Gloria. This is Dot again. And you know, as you're sharing this, uh, so many of us now working in group, when you spoke about the fire of group unity in conscious context with the whole what really 
touches me and I'm, I'm asking you to speak on it a little bit. You point out that this will always be unanimous, not from acquiescence into a lesser view on any member's part, but a unanimous realization of the context within the whole. That seems critical in that fire. Yes, it's the most important thing. In one way, I discovered that each one of these fires is something that we also live in our lives. We have an inspiration in relation to our life. You're dedicated to be as good as we can be. We want to integrate with all of humanity if we can. We want to be certain to be part of a new group of world servers and to be of service in any way that we can to the Lord of the world. And then when it comes to the group unity, this is where what is going to be good for the whole world will be good for every individual also. And so that's how that fits in. And of course, after a person has learned how to work with these fires, they can become a disciple, which is the fifth fire. And as a disciple, will eventually become an initiate, which is the sixth fire in the evolution on our planet. So the fires of group work are the fires of life. Mm. Yeah, thank you. There is uh, one question from coming from Risa and um, Gloria, thank you. When speaking about the whole, what do you mean? The whole of the group, the whole of the universe? Can you say more? The whole of the group is first, but it isn't, it's not the, if it isn't the whole of the universe, it may be that what, that what you're working with is something that doesn't have anything to do with the universe. It may be, you know, the fires would be in operation, even if you were planning to rob a bank, you'd still have to have the inspiration to do it, the dedication and the integration to do it. And everyone would, on it would, have, would want to have it working in relation to the whole, to have a successful robbery. But that is not what these fires are actually about. You'll never ever get to the fifth and sixth fire unless everything that you're doing is in relation to universals. It must be in relation to universals. There must be a service involved to the evolution of the prop of the whole planet and even working into the solar system and beyond into the galaxy. If a person is working as completely as they can with the fire of unity, it will be dealing with universals. It has to do with, like I said, the planet, the solar system, and the galaxy. And even beyond, we don't know in science what our connection is to all of those stars out there but we do know that there are many, many rays of energy hitting our planet at all times. And they fit in with every fire that a person needs to be able to integrate with all of it in whatever, whatever they're involved with in their life. There's no such thing as a human being on this planet that doesn't go through those fires. Did that 
answer the question? Yes. I think it does. Powerfully, and I think if you could see us all right now, we are all standing in that depth of realization uh, on this burning ground. Thank you. And Gloria, <laughs> even Madison would like to uh, speak with you for a moment. Alexander, can we unmute Avon? Yes. Avon, please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, dearest Gloria. This is Avon. Hello, Avon. Hello. <laughs> Glad to know you're there with us. <laughs> well, I met you just a little bit, a couple of years before Dot did, through our beloved uh, shared colleague and friend, Robert, or Robert Muller. And the question I have for you, which is one of the main reasons I wanted, uh, I asked Dot and uh, Alexander if they um, would invite you as, um, as, as one of the presenters, is that the 2025 group is working with intergroups, with different groups around the world, and that's something with which um, I know you're also very familiar. And I think this is the time that the the, the groups, all groups are called to work in more cooperative ways with one another, just as it's so important with the United Nations to, to truly learn to do that for the evolution of humanity and the planet. And so regarding the 2025 initiative, because there are so many groups around the world um, of different um, different fa focus points or facets of the one work. Can you just share some of your ideas about how the fires work with intergroup or interorganizational work in terms of the uh, the unfolding and our participation in the unfolding and implementation of the divine plan? The way that I see this from the largest from the largest picture is that we can do it right or we can make a big mistake. We want all of humanity to be clothed and housed and fed, and we would like for them all to be happy. But that's not necessarily what the Lord of the world is anxious to have happen right now. We, could, we want to have all the problems solved for the planet to make the planet have all that it needs. And all those groups are working for to do this. Some are working with the wider with the widest view, and some are working on the lower view that only works with the personalities of the people and not with the soul. And if it's not going to be for the soul, then there will be some problems that will come up because the, um, the whole has to do with the evolution of the planet itself. And we can't leave any part of it out. We can't leave out the plant or the mineral or the animal. Any of those are part of the whole and they must be taken into consideration so all the groups need to cooperate to help solve human problems that are strictly human but they must add to it the light of the soul to bring them into the spiritual life that they truly are because a happy personality is not a soul that's working in relation to the next solar system and the full evolution of the planet. So think about it that way. I know that the, we're working right now, putting a lot of energy into all of the problems that we have with the changing that we have caused on our planet because of 
misuse of science. And now we want to change those things and put everything right. And that is part of the fires of a group work. That is part of the fire of life. To be dedicated to do that and to integrate with all those groups that are working for the whole and for the entire situation, not just something like the science to freeze a person so that they can be brought back to life after they have solved their illness. We want healing to be healing, that is educating people how to stay healthy in their life. I've found at 93 that the, that the major solution for health is simplicity. Everything needs to be simplified. Don't eat so much. Simplify your food. Don't eat, don't eat so complicated dishes. Make everything simple and it will give you good health. I'm, I'm still working all day every day at 93 and it's because of simplicity. Did that make any difference? <laughs> As always, Gloria, anything that draws out your experience and your wisdom is very needed to be shared, particularly at this time. And it always does. And is there anything else you would like to say about the significance of at this time? Uh, the 2025 initiative is, is also joining in with the Sustainable Development Goals, um, the 2030 UN Agenda for Sustainability. And working with each one of the goals. And there's part of your connection also with the United Nations that is so important that I want uh, you to speak about, which is um, uh, your connection with the Global uh, Model UN uh, yes. for elementary and middle school students. Oh, and yeah. this gets to the point of how important intergenerational and interorganizational, basically inter everything, is as we begin to work through the group fires, um, but also how this is passed on to the younger generations who are being taught subtly through what you do at your school with the group fires, but having young people, i.e. elementary and middle school students, be able to uh, be engaged as if they are truly at the United Nations as delegates, as ambassadors, as, et cetera, and also those working as the middle school acting as the secretariat, because this is the next generation of those that we hope are going to continuously be moving into leadership, not only in their own nations, but also in their relationship with each nation, with the United Nations. Well, one of the major things that Robert Mueller <clears throat> paid attention to was the fact that the United Nations is where all of the nations get together. That's the only place where this, where the fire of integration can take place, is where they all get together and solve the problems of the world. And we found out that children from schools all over the world are interested in being part of the United Nations to, start, to solve world problems. So we had first the children in the Robert Mueller School worked with the model United Nations. And then when they graduated, the younger children said, we want to do it. And we decided to have an elementary model United Nations where children who are only just starting in school in the fourth, fourth to eighth grade and then high school students to be the secretariat. We let them um, choose a committee and choose a country and then work for to write resolutions and solve world problems. We've done this now for 30 years. Every year we have new children coming until 
Now, there have been over 9,000 who have gone through as delegates. And um, what they do is look at world problems from the point of view of the United Nations. And they write resolutions to solve the problems. And of course, we're using the sustainable goals as part of their writing resolutions because they see that that is something that will be helpful for the whole. And so these children who would not have heard much about the United Nations, children are coming from other countries, schools in other countries come to be and bring their young children to be part of the United Nations, of the model United Nations. And they, um, it is, um, it gives you chills to see those young children get up on the stage and talk about their country and how they want to help bring peace to the world and solve all the world's problems to make everyone be, um, fed and taken care of for every country on the planet. And in most countries, even the adults don't have a good idea of what the United Nations does. So we think that, the, that this is one of our major service activities is to help children, they can register and become a delegate from any country and be part of the United Na the model United Nations. So we, since it's our 31st year, we've kind of worked out all the bugs now. And <laughs> it's a pretty smooth <laughs> operation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for people who want to, if you have children that are in school age, uh, up to high school, even beginning in the fourth grade, if they're interested in being part of the model United Nations, get in touch with us because we can help you with that. Thank you, Gloria. And I really encourage maybe that um, Alexander could put a link up at some point and make it available not only on this program, but also afterwards so that others who listen to it can, can avail themselves of that and also of being able to obtain the booklet on on the uh, fires of, of group work and uh, through I, uh, Lucy's Trust, hopefully, as, as we've been kind of working behind the scenes to arrange. And there's one other aspect to bring in, I think, is just about the World Core curriculum, because when you and I have been um, colleagues and, and deep friends from Oh gosh, the late the late seventies, early eighties, and what yes. I've noticed about you over all these these uh, short but somewhat long also decades of how much has occurred is that you have consistently with your school maintained a focus on dedicated service, and one of them was bringing forward the World Core, World Core Curriculum, which was based upon. Um, Robert's, one of his speeches at, at the UN and one of his great agenda items was the power of education and the significance of it for, for building a culture of peace, for peace, period, which is, of course, the whole purpose of the United Nations. And so would you speak a little bit about the World Core Curriculum, please? Well, the World Core Curriculum that Robert Mueller had, uh, had put together was took into account four categories. He said every human being, every child should know what their place is in the universe as a human being, how they are part of the stars and the whole universe, and then how they're part of humanity on this planet and to look at the history of humanity and see what humanity has done in time, what humanity has done, not what just one country, but what humanity has done, what we have done that is good 
and what we have done that is sad. And to know what both of those things are is very important. And then to have what a child can do that is a um, miracle of human life, which is put you, put you in, in condition and in touch with your own soul. And to know that you are living as part of that category, those, those four categories of being part of the human family. And we taught the children to think of races in a simple way like you would about something like all cats or all dogs. They are, they are of many different colored fur and many different sizes and shapes, but they're all cats. And the same thing with human beings, wherever they are, they can be any color, any, any height, any color eyes or hair, but they're all human beings. And they're, no one is superior to any other. They're all the same and are to be loved the same way. That's part of the World Core curriculum. We have a book on the World Core curriculum that we just finished printing. And just like we just finished printing the new Fires of Group Workbook with colors, so that the, the uh, World Core Curriculum book is all the resources and the ways that the curriculum is put together so that anyone can start a Robert Mueller school and, and um, use the categories to help a child learn and live in that broad spectrum. When he first put the World Core curriculum into, um, into a speech, I heard him and I was immediately inspired because our school was putting together a pro private school using the education in the new age. So we got all the people together and made it a Robert Mueller school. And he said, he was told, Robert, this curriculum is magnificent, but no one will ever implement it in our lifetime. And that was Mortimer Adler great educator. So we asked Robert Waller if we could implement his curriculum and, and put it into operation. Would he just give us the information? He said, I don't really have the information. You have to figure that out for yourself. I can just tell you it's part, the part of the human family. You look that up in history. You learn all the arts and so forth in relation to all of humanity. And you, and you study the planet itself and your place in the universe. And you study the world corporation as, as a uh, uh, unit so that it's part of the evolution of the planet that every single human being on this planet needs all of those things involved in their life. So we did. <laughs> and he won the United Nations Peace Prize for Education in 1989. You certainly did. And what I want everyone to know, and then I'm going to allow others, I mean, it's really important to hear other people and their comments and their questions to have this rare opportunity to be with you, dearest Gloria. But just so others know that what Gloria did as part of the service opportunity was to take Robert's idea and his speech and his idea of a world core curriculum, and she brought in the, the wisdom of the ageless wisdom plus her practical knowledge of so much experience in this life and her, her deep love for the United Nations and wove all of this together into the world core curriculum. Thank you, dear heart. 
Thank you. And there, uh, there was a, a webinar with Gloria uh, two years ago, uh, where Gloria told told us more about work with Robert Mueller's program and about this actual implementation of the project. So I refer you to the archive section on our website. I will find it and we'll put it in the chat window that you could go directly there to listen to that webinar. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple hands raised, so I will unmute um, uh, Katya now. Uh, Katya, please unmute yourself. We have, um, we have the book on the World Court curriculum uh, tells the whole curriculum and also gives the um, accreditation papers that we received from implementing that curriculum. And um, we have that available here. And we also have the group fires book available from the school here. And then we have not let down for one moment our study of the ageless wisdom because it has to do with the evolution of our planet, the evolution of a human being, and reincarnation is a part of that. You know, we've all lived before. And then the way that we fit into all of those situations require study, science, true science. We're not interested in playing games with this. This is life. And it's, it's a life that can be thrilling and a great adventure. And that's the way I have seen it since the very beginning. Thank you, Gloria. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all about all these things. And there are more questions and comments. So, um, Katya? Yes. <clears throat> um, hi, Gloria. It hi. is really, yes, um, it's, it's, it is really precious to hear you, to hear your basic, to hear your soul through that voice and, um, I just have to say thank you for for your book. It um, it came in really amazingly on time when we had a lot of issues with the group work, like about twelve, like fifteen years ago. It was good to to know that there are people who are knowing exactly what's going on, and um, that sharing it meant a lot. And um, I come uh, from uh, the tradition of uh, Russian mm -hmm. esoteric groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we do have a slightly different way of working together. It's, it's, um, it's, it, it, you know, I had to, I had to adjust a lot when I came to live in the, to, to the United States, which was about 20 years ago. The question is, how do you navigate the difference of the depth with a full dedication and full inspiration yet the difference in depth and the difference in the sense of liveliness um, that is to me still a pretty big question in a group work you it, it has to do somewhat with what you're using as your um, process or what your project is. Your project may not require um, the depth of information that would be, that would call on study of the science of, of, um, of the very small or, or the very large, it could be something it's a smaller kind of project and it would only take dedication for a short time in that case. But if you're doing something that has to do with service to all of humanity, then you're going to have to have people who are dedicated much more deeply 
and much more seriously than for a small project like, for instance, to have uh, get everybody together to have an outing. Mm. That still requires some help and some cooperation, but it's over with after the outing. But there are other things that you can do when you're working on any kind of project is uh, I'm thinking that we're working here and when I'm speaking with the people I'm speaking with in this webinar, I'm getting the sensitivity that this is world issues. This is not just a little group work project. This is for the evolution of our planet in the solar system. And so each person needs to think about how they fit into those fires, how that is working with you, how is your inspiration and your dedication to humanity? How is your integration with the human beings in the world that some people hate? There cannot be any hate. There is no such thing. There is only love. And you must realize there is no one to hate. If someone is making a big mistake, the Lord of the world knows that and the hierarchy will be working on it at the right time in the right way. Don't let one thought come into your mind of hating someone for making a mistake and for being maybe um, self-centered in, in some sense that causes you to feel disgusted. Don't do that. Don't let yourself be unloving. Your soul is never disgusted. Your soul is only loving. And this is what you have to do with the fires. Accept, I'll accept your imperfections if you'll accept mine. And we will integrate and live in this world together in peace and harmony. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloria. Mm. That is the mm -hmm. most amazing help that came. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your answer in depth. And much love to you. Much, much love. Thank Think you. about it this way, please, everyone. There are things going on all the time that we see every day in the news. Please don't let the news put you in a place of negativity and wanting to hurt something. Don't let yourself be pulled into that ugliness. Realize this, that the Lord of the world knows what's going on and everything is under control. What you need to do is move into the place where you only see the good. There is good everywhere. See it and live for it and with it and never allow anyone to say a hateful word about something or someone in your presence. Such a beautiful reminder, uh, and it, I would call it an invocation, Gloria, thank you. And Chris Thomas, uh, who is Christine Thomas with the Signet Center for Peace Building on the Sunshine Coast has her hand raised. I think you're unmuted, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Dot. Hi, Gloria. I just wanted to uh, express an absolute heartfelt uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I hope you can feel what's pouring forth from my heart right now, that the gift of your sharing and the gift of you being in the world 
and uh, I just want to um, uh, thank you because I'm so deeply inspired by what you have shared, not only about the group working, uh, but the power of what you've shared um, in the work that you've been doing with children for so long now. Uh, so thank you so much and uh, I look forward to connecting more deeply with you on a shared love that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I'm so acutely aware of the efforts that are required to undertake such a uh, lifelong work. Uh, and so I'm just so deeply grateful. Um, and so thank you so much for your sharing. <laughs> You're welcome. You're all so welcome. Um, my background, in the first place, I was an engineer <laughs> and an artist. Most of my work early on in life was doing portraits and, and working in engineering at the Boeing Company. <laughs> now they wouldn't even be able to use the same things that they did when I was there, which was pencil and paper. <laughs> now they would use the deepest kinds of science to put things together in a different way. But altogether, when you start thinking about life and what it's about, it's far beyond anything that you can imagine that, that you would do, except to everyone that's been born with some qualities that they have developed, and those can be put into operation for good. And then, with all thoughts going from your heart to the love and having the vision of the peace that can be brought about by us all working together. And that makes life fantastic adventure. Thank you, I think you've called forth the love from all of our hearts today. So thank you so much. There are a number of comments in the chat coming, people expressing love and gratitude to you, Gloria, for what you're sharing today. Um, I want you to tell us more about the fire. And you mentioned fire number five and six a little bit and then not much information on those in your book so maybe we could use this opportunity and just to hear you what are those fires fire of discipleship in particular because it's such a power of fire that the world group is calling now and just can you tell us share with us about that well, the most, the first one, the fire of discipleship. This is where you become the disciple of the Christ. This is where you want to follow in his footsteps. You want to be as the Christ. You will be as the Christ at some point. That is what our evolution is leading toward. That is discipleship. Discipleship means you get rid of all non-essentials. Non-essentials are not part of discipleship. You only want to work with essentials and simplicity. And you can look through yourself and see what parts of yourself are not really something that is along the line of the Christ? You can tell. You know what it is. Nobody else can possibly know besides you. 
you're the only one who knows. People can look at you and imagine something, but they don't know. You're the only one who knows. You know what is between you and the next step forward. You're the one who knows. No one else knows, only you. And as you work toward the things that discipleship brings, you get rid of the non-essentials and start living with essentials until um, the things that are important show up in your life. And the hierarchy and the Lord of the world are pouring energy into the group that will do this into all disciples you get your power from those hierarchical energies and you get your power from the lord of the world don't take it from anywhere else and then you synthesize it and you become a healer in every way mentally emotionally, physically, but especially spiritually. Every single person is capable of this and is in the process of it. You right now are dealing with some part of the fires. And as a disciple, you require some because there is so much background on our planet right now that there is information that you can study. There are people who have gone this way before who have written books and put things together for us to study and then to use and to be part of it. And there's something else we need to be thinking about because the Christ is going to reappear. We need to prepare men's hearts and minds for that. How can you do it? It's difficult to bring up the subject, but you can be an example. And whenever you have an opportunity, put in a word about it. Put in a word about your knowledge that it is going to happen. It's going to occur. It could happen in our lifetime. Mm. Thank you, Gloria. And uh, as Alexander said, there are numerous comments in the questions uh, box. And one at the World Core Curriculum outline is there. And uh, there is a question, Gloria, and good number. Yes. A question. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the connection uh, that we cannot hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you now? Oh, yeah, we can hear you, Gloria, yeah, but we cannot hear that. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Suggestion from the questioner is to, for us to get it in there. What Robert Muller always said was, This is the education of the future. And of course, it is. And it will be. So that knowing what it is, you almost have to be a disciple in order to be using the world core curriculum. And um, most schools are just teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic and how to play computer games. And those are not, this is not where we're going to live our lives. We have to go further. Yes, and what you have demonstrated is that 
beyond possibility, it is probability with these youth. So again, the World Core Curriculum Outline is available at the link there, the UNESCO link, and you can request it uh, from Gloria and the school as well. And it may be for some of us who find ourselves in education to take a step forward with this. There is a question reading from Risa. Reading through the book, you can see what has happened and how it has happened and why it fits for every child on the planet to have that education. Gloria, there is a, another question uh, coming from Risa asking if they are fire of initiative. To the question is what? Is there a fire of initiate or? Oh, the initiate. The, initiate? the last, yeah. last fire, yes. Um, <clears throat> the initiate is the person who is no longer a personality. It's a person who has entered the kingdom of God. A person who is living as a member of the kingdom of God. The two kingdoms exist together on our planet right now. Many people have taken initiation as a soul. They are soul infused. They are initiates. They're not going to make the mistakes that a person who is a simple personality will make because the personality is just your equipment. It's not you. You are the spiritual being inhabiting that equipment and you can use it for good and for the evolution of our planet. So the initiate is the person who is living at all times, constantly in the kingdom of God. You do that wherever you are, under all the circumstances that you're in you're still in the kingdom of God. You can't skip from one part to the other. You have to go through all the fires to get there. Does that satisfy yes. that question? especially the last part about going through all the fires one by one without skipping any of them. You have to first be inspired, then you must be dedicated, then you must be able to integrate, then you must have unity with the whole this will bring you to discipleship and this will bring you to initiation and this will bring you to the kingdom of God. Considering the timing, I think it's a good moment for us to go to meditation. Will you please lead us, Gloria? The meditation. Think of the think of the great invocation as the most powerful prayer on the planet. And you let light stream forth. Think of what that means light streaming forth from the mind of God into the minds of men. And from the point of love within the heart of God, think of that love streaming forth into the hearts of humanity.
Then from the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, all of that will work out. The plan of light and love. And seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on the earth and sound the own each one as a dedication of your light and your love and your purpose to the plan on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria, and thanks to everyone joining us today in this circle. Yes, thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> we still have some time to the end of the webinar. Is there anything else, Gloria, you want to share with us today? Maybe if you can tell us how we can get, how people can get in touch with you and with your school. Well, the address is um, six, the School of Ageless Wisdom, 6005 Royal Oak, that's one word, R-O-Y-A-L-O-A-K, Drive in Arlington, Texas, 76016. And if you write to me, I can tell you and send you any of the things that we have here that you, that you would need. We have 
we actually don't uh, charge anything for anything we do except for the printing. So for the books, we can't actually just give them all away, but we do have a bunch that we can give away. And then we have others that are newly printed and they will have to have a charge. But whatever you want, you can let me know. And uh, at that address and um, Telephoning isn't always useful because um, our phone, we have too many robocalls and um, uh, there's no uh, dealing with it except just to live with it. So we just don't answer those. And, um, but uh, email gcrook9 at gmail.com is my email address. gcrook9 at gmail.com. If you, if you email me, I will email you back. Thank you. And there's a dress now in the chat window. I hope I didn't mistype anything. So it's School of Ageless Wisdom, 6005 Royal Oak Drive, Arlington, Texas, 76016. Is that right, Gloria? Yes. And the Royal Oak is one word. And Gloria, and you have a Cycles newsletter online each month as well, yes? Yes, we do. If you look up our our online um, activity, you can find each part of it. But that part, if you want us to mail you a copy of the cycles, we will mail you a hard copy. You just have to give us your your physical address to get it. But it is online also. And uh, Gloria mentioned or that I didn't remember that uh, there is a hard copy books of the fires of the group work available at Lucy's Trust. So you could email to New York office of Lucy's Trust requesting your copy and they will send them to you. Is that right? Is it New York headquarter or any headquarter? New York. New York. So, um, we are getting close to the end and the address to the website is on the chat box. But Gloria, we still have a few minutes, so the floor is yours. Just whatever you want to share with us, please. I think, um, I don't know how many people are involved right now. How, how many people were in this today? Uh, we have, there are, uh, at the moment, there are 47 of us, but there's some people who are more than one person in one computer. Uh, we were more than 50. Okay. Um, the, thing, the thing that's important is for you to know that, um, that the School of Ag Ageless Wisdom uh, has uh, used the Ageless Wisdom books as our background for everything we do. And um, we have applied the information. We don't just study it, we do it. And, um, and we have seen that life is um, important to work together. And um, so we have, a, it requires people to be in this area. 
it's really an interesting situation right now that we have a young man who is flying here every single Sunday for eight weeks to go through the entrance class. I, we are amazed that's never happened before, but he's coming from California every Sunday for eight weeks to go, to, to go through the entrance class. Then after a person finishes the eight weeks where they are given the information for each one of their bodies, the physical, the emotional, and the mental, that's your equipment. And then they are given the information about the soul and beyond the soul where you can go into discipleship and into initiation. And this is all in the books. And so you give that, that information in the school, in the entrance class. And then if a person wants to continue studying, then your meditation gets deeper and deeper. Your knowledge gets richer and richer in relation to the kingdom of God, which we have to establish on our planet. Only humanity can do it. God has put humans here to build his kingdom on this planet, and we will do it. We have to do it, and we will. And it's in process of happening. Thank you. Today is the first day of the five days period of the full moon. So we will be working all together, linking as one group during this five days period and onwards. Working as a planetary server, coming into the realization of our collective group responsibility. And as we work through our individual groups, Let's remember about our collective identity, identity that emerges. Yes. <laughs> planetary servers. Thank you, everyone. And uh, please join our next webinars. In the cycle of New Moon, we will continue working with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and um, cycle of Virgo we will focus on goal 14, life below water. We invite you to take this goal into your meditation daily as we prepare to the combination on August 31st when we will together, we'll meditate to strengthen the thought form of all sustainable development goals and goal 14 in particular. And then in the next uh, full moon cycle, in the Virgo full moon cycle, we will continue working with the energies of the mutable cause and with the, with the topic of right relationships. And this time in the, under the energy of Virgo, we will reflect together on the right relationships between all the kingdoms of nature and with the planet as a whole. Please join us. Thank you, Gloria. Very good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, do I push the OK button? Always press the OK button. Everything <laughs> will be OK. <laughs> Indeed. Says to leave the webinar, we push the OK button. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. But okay. I want to say thank you, Dot, and thank you so much, Alexander, and to all the listeners, whoever you are and wherever you are, I love you. <laughs> mm. And we love you, Gloria, so much love. <laughs>